In today's Blender tutorial, we're going to be creating this sci-fi large space station scene. We'll have ships coming in and going out, but we'll be mainly focusing on creating the sci-fi looking station. It'll be done in geometry nodes, so let's start the tutorial. In our default scene, we'll bring our cursor to the junction of these two windows, click and drag to create a new window, and then change this from the 3D viewport to the geometry node editor. Then we'll press this plus button to create a new geometry node tree, after which we can select the group input and tap X to delete it because we don't need it. Then we'll press Shift A and search for a cylinder and then plug this into the group output. Now we need a few changes to the cylinder, the first being that we need it to be rotated about the y-axis and we need it longer and we need it to be much smoother. So let's change the number of vertices to 256 to make it really nice and smooth. After that, to rotate it about the y-axis, we need to search for a transform geometry node and plug that in right here. I'm also going to switch on snapping and the timings so that I can see which operations are taking too much of time because this scene might get a little heavy if I use too many subdivisions and things like that. Next, I'll rotate it on the y-axis by 90 degrees and I'll change the depth to something like 5 meters to make it much longer. Now if I'm to go into wireframe view I can see that there aren't any cuts along the side so let's just change the side segments up to something like 200 and now we have cuts going along the sides as well which gives us these nice square faces. Now back in solid view you can see that we have a solid face here I don't want that so I'll change the fill type from ngon to none and now we just have a nice cylinder. Now this is going to act as our base and we're going to create four variations of this and we're going to perform operations to each variation. So to create the variations we're going to search for a joint geometry node so that we can have all of them and we're just going to use transform geometry nodes to give them their own individual size. So let's just go ahead and plug the output from this transform geometry into the input of this one and then plug this into the joint geometry. Then let's just scale it on the Y and Z axes to bring it up and we'll go with something fairly close but just slightly larger. So maybe 1.08 is close enough. And then we can duplicate this transform geometry node, plug that in here, take this and plug it in, take this and plug this into the joint geometry. And this time instead of 1.8, let's scale it down so that it just comes inward by a bit. And let's do that once again. So shift D, bring this down. Let's join these up. And once we're done with that, this one maybe will scale up even further. So now we have four concentric cylinders and we can start working with each of them separately. To give us some more space to work with, we'll just shift these to the side shift this one down here, this one up there, and this one about here. Now for the first one, we'll start off by dealing with the innermost circle that we created. So let's go ahead to this transform geometry because this one was scaled down and is the innermost one. For those, I want there to be these tiny circular dots in a sci-fi manner. So let's press shift A and search for a mesh to points node and plug that in so that we just have a bunch of points present over here. Now on each of these points, we want to instance a circle. So let's press shift A and search for an instance on points node. And then for the instance, let's search for a mesh circle and then plug this into the instance. Now obviously the circles are way too large so let's just change the radius down to maybe 0.01 meters and we'll change the fill type from none to ngon. The next thing is deleting a bunch of these circles to make it look far more sci-fi and we can do that using this selection so that we don't instance the circles on every single one of the points. So for that we'll go ahead and press shift A and search for a noise texture and we'll search for a color ramp so that we have more control over which areas are completely black and which ones aren't. Then we can simply take the color from the noise texture and plug it into the factor and take the color output from the color ramp into the selection. Then as we start dragging the black slider in you should see how all of these start getting deleted and we just have much fewer circles present. To change the way this clumps together, you can play around with the scale. So I'm actually going to scale it up to something like 10 and I think that looks good enough. The next issue that we have is that all of these circles are just flat like this, but we need them to be oriented along this curve. And for that, we have to use an align Euler to vector node. So let's search for an align Euler to vector and we want to align it with the normals. However, if we were to directly plug in the normals as the vector, so if we search for a normal node and plug it into the vector, and use this rotation in the rotation, you'll see that no matter which axis we choose, we're not going to make any changes because right now the way geometry node works is it's taking the normal from whatever it's connected into, which is the instance on points, which is taking in points. Now, one way to fix this is by just ignoring the mesh to points node directly. And therefore we actually get the correct rotations and we can choose Z to get the right rotations. And that was definitely a much easier fix than adding in this mesh to points and capturing the normal before this. So let's just delete that. And ignore that we ever converted it to points. But just in case you are in a situation where you need to convert it to points before instancing on the points, you can actually just capture an attribute right here 
and we have to change this from float to vector. Hopefully you can see it. So we change it from float to vector over here. And for the value, we simply capture the normal. And from this capture attribute node, we can take the attribute output and plug that into the vector of the align Euler to vector. So that's one way to fix it, but we don't require that if we directly use the transform geometry because that way it's instancing on the geometry and the geometry does have normals. So it'll align properly. Now that looks good enough for the innermost cylinder that we created. Let's press shift A and search for a set material node and just set a material. So let's go to the materials, call this circles and then choose circles over here. Next, we can deal with the one that's just larger than this innermost circle, which was the one that we did not do any transformation to, which is this line over here. So for those, I want to actually convert this into a bunch of lines and I want those lines to be scaled on the x-axis in a more sci-fi looking manner. To do that, let's press shift A and search for a delete geometry node and plug that in right here. And for the selection, we just want to select a random bunch. So let's search for a random value, change it from float to boolean, and then plug this value into the selection. Now that we have a bunch of them deleted, we can always increase the probability or reduce it to get fewer or more edges deleted, but I'll maybe keep the probability at 0.4. And then I'll press shift A and search for a transform geometry so that we can scale it up on the x-axis by a bit. Let's just scale it up and that looks pretty good. And now I'm going to search for a scale elements node, plug that in here, and I'm going to change this from uniform to single axis, and I'm going to scale all of the edges on the x-axis. So the axis I'm going to keep as x and I'm going to start increasing the scale. Okay, so let's scale this up by something like nine. And that way we get really nice lines, but it's far too long on the x axis now. So I'm actually going to change this first delete geometry to edge. And then I'm going to delete a bunch of points after that. So let's plug this in here, take another random value node, plug that into the selection. And this one I'm going to actually keep at all itself. So by doing that, we're able to actually delete a bunch of the points in a way that causes it to come down on the X axis. And I'm not going to keep this on edge. I'm going to keep this on point. And that way we just get a lot more randomness. So let's scale this up even more now. And I think that looks pretty cool. Now we need to convert this from lines to actual geometry that can be seen in the rendered view. So let's press shift A and search for a mesh to curve and plug that in right here and then search for a curve to mesh. For the profile curve, we can press shift A and search for a curve circle. But before we plug it in itself, we can reduce the resolution down to something like four and decrease the radius down to maybe 0.01 and then plug this into the profile curve. Now I think 0.01 is still far too thick. So let's change this to 0.05 or 0.002. So I think this type of thickness is good enough. So we'll leave it like this for now. You can always play around with the scale values here and the scale values there. You just get different distributions of this setup. So it's up to you and what you prefer. Play around with it till you're happy with what you get. Next, let's go to the next layer, which is this transform geometry over here. We can go ahead and simply instance some cubes onto it. So let's press shift A and search for a distribute points on faces node. We'll increase the density to something really high. Let's go with 30 and then press shift A and search for an instance on points node and we'll instance a bunch of cubes. So let's search for a cube. And just like last time, before we even plug it in. Let's change the size from one down to something like 0.2 and then plug the mesh into the instance. Now again, we need to get the rotation correct, but this time we don't need to align anything because we've actually distributed points on faces and that comes with a rotation socket that you can directly plug into the rotation and the alignment becomes perfect. However, because they're all the exact same size, there's a few of these alignment issues or overlap issues that I don't really like. And so I'm going to use a random value to scale it up randomly, but I don't want it to scale up by too much. So I'm just going to keep the min at maybe 0.8 and the max at maybe 1.2. And that should be enough to add in just a slight amount of variation as well as prevent all of those overlap issues that we were having. So that looks pretty good. And again, we need to set materials. So let's press shift A, search for set material, plug it in here, add in a new material slot, press this new button and then call this cubes and then choose cubes over here. Similarly, for the lines that we just created, we can set material there as well. So let's press shift A, search for a set material node and then plug that in after the curve to mesh and press this plus button to create a new material slot, press new to add in a new material, call this lines and then choose lines over here. Finally, we can deal with this last transform geometry that we had created, which was for the outer wall. So I think the outer wall is present right here. We need to give it some thickness. So let's press shift A and search for an extrude mesh node. And we're not going to make it individual because clearly you can see what that does. So let's just uncheck individual and it becomes a nice smooth wall, but we don't need it to be this thick. So let's change this offset to 0.1 and that should be thick enough. 
enough. I also want this to be large enough to cover up all of these cubes. Let's just scale it on the X as well by maybe 1.05 and that's covering up all of the edges of the cube. So that's good. And now if you actually take a look at it, there's no inner face. It's just this edge and that face, but we need a face to be present over here so that it's actually solid. For that, we press shift A and search for a join geometry node and we can simply connect this initial transform geometry in and that fixes it. But just as good practice, because we know that the normals are flipped, we're going to search for a flip faces node and plug that in over here to prevent any shading errors that might occur in the future. Apart from that, if we want to subdivide it to get some nice bevel, because this is a pretty sharp edge, it's again best practice to search for a merge by distance node and plug that in over here so that we are able to subdivide and bevel it without any issues. But since this is a large space scene, we're not going to be doing that because sharp edges give a feeling of scale as well. Again, we need to set material. So let's press shift A, search for a set material node, plug that in over here, and then you can press this plus button. And for this material, you could create your own. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my asset browser and I'm simply going to choose one of the sci-fi materials that I taught in this video over here. It's linked in the top right as well and it'll be linked in the description and then you can just drag and drop it into that slot 4 and that way it gets that particular sci-fi material. Now we can go back to the geometry node editor and then select the sci-fi material over here and that's it for the modeling of the tunnel. Next let's go ahead and set all of our defaults before we start texturing. So let's go to our render properties, switch on bloom, screen space reflections as well as motion blur. Then let's go to the output properties, change Change the frame rate to 30 frames per second. End frame, I'm going to make it 300 so that it's a 10 second long animation. Output folder can be wherever you want it to be. File format, we're going to choose FFmpeg video. Encoding, we're going to change the container from Matroska to MPEG4. And output quality, we're going to choose Perceptory Lossless. Then we'll switch our viewport display to render so that we can actually see the changes that we make. And we're going to switch the geometry node editor to the shader editor. We're also going to go to the world properties and change the background color all the way to a pitch black, after which we can start messing around with each of the materials separately. So for this scene, we because it's in space, I want everything to be more or less desaturated. The color, we're going to go ahead and just desaturate it by changing the saturation slider down to maybe 0.2 on this one. This color can maybe have a saturation of 0.25 and that's actually good enough. I also want to change the scale. So I'll change the scale up to something like 10 and that's my outer material. If you want to build this material, it's fairly simple. It's just Voronoi texture that goes into a brick texture and the brick texture goes into a color ramp for the roughness of the principal BSDF as well as a bump node to add in some height displacement and it also acts as the base color from the principal BSDF and that goes into the material output. Anyhow, we can then go back to the material properties and choose the circles. For the circles, I just want it to be emissive, so I'll delete the principal PSDF and search for an emission node. Now I'm gonna plug this into the surface, but I want a few of these to be switched on and a few of them to be switched off, and I want that to change over time. For that, I'm gonna search for a color ramp node, and I'm gonna change this from linear to constant, and I'm gonna slide this in so that we have a few of them on and a few of them off. If I plug this in here, right now, whatever is at 0.5 of this slider is is going to go into the color which is currently black. We don't want that. We need to control this factor using a random value. So I can search for an object info node and because we instanced these circles on, each instance will have a random number between 0 to 1 in this random socket of the object info node. So we can plug this into the factor and now we have a bunch of them off and a bunch of them on. We can see that by playing around with these sliders. If we slide this towards the edge, more of them switch off and if we slide it this side, more of them switch on. So right now I have like 50% of them off and 50% of them on and to change this, an easy way to actually mess around with this is using a math node to add in a value. But if we just add in a value, eventually everything switches on and then nothing goes off anymore. But to fix that, all we do is press shift A and search for another math node and change it from add to fraction. And by doing this, it's always going to give out a value between zero to one. And by adding in some value, we get this random movement of these particular lights. So that is a nice way to actually loop this out and just have this moving as well. So you can add in a driver over here to animate this. So let's press hash frame by 100. And that way, whenever you play the animation, you, you are going to have these lights slowly changing over time. So that looks good enough. Let's start with the cubes material. For the cubes material, I'm going to press shift A and search for a Voronoi texture. And I'm going to change this from Euclidean to Chebyshev. And I'm going to reduce the randomness down to something like 0.2. And I'm going to plug this color into the roughness. I'm also going to increase the metallic all the way to one. And that looks good enough. If you zoom in, this is what it looks like. I think I can play around with the randomness a little bit more. So maybe a randomness of 0.5 is giving a nice 
nice feel. So I'm going to go with that itself. Next, for the actual lines, I'm just going to go ahead and make it metallic. I'm going to reduce the roughness down to maybe 0.3 and that's good enough. I might play around with the roughness a little bit later on as well. Next, I have to deal with the lighting. So for the main light, I'm just going to change the radius to maybe 10 and then I'll just press Alt G to clear its location, after which I'll press G X to bring it out of the tunnel. So I think some position like this will be good enough. It's present just outside the tunnel, but because we are in space, there's obviously going to be one major source of light, which is going to be the sun. So I'll press Shift A and search for a light sun, and then I'll press G X to bring it to the side, G Z to bring it up. And I'm essentially going to change the angle by pressing this little yellow dot and moving it to some angle that I feel suits this scenario. I'm actually going to change it to like that sort of a direction and I'm going to make it point down. So I'll press one to go into the side view and just bring it down like that. I think that's good enough for texturing this sci-fi tunnel. Next, we can set up the camera. So let's just go to some type of a location that I think looks good and then press control alt zero to snap camera to view. Then I'll select the camera over here, go to the camera properties and change the focal length to 100 so that we give it a sense of scale by removing any sort of distortions towards the edge of the camera. Then we'll go to the viewport display and increase passport out all the way to one. And I'll press G Z twice to move it back on the local Z axis until we have this fit into frame. You can always move it on the different axes until you get a location that you are happy with. So once you're done with that, you have to actually create some spaceships to go in and out. Now there's many ways in which you can actually create these spaceships. And the easiest would actually be to get spaceship packs from different websites online. You would find some some free packs as well. But because the spaceships are going to be small and we're going to be using quite a bit of motion blur, you can also just create it yourself. So let's hide the main cube for now. And if you don't want it to lag your system, you can toggle your viewport display icon as well. And by pressing this, it's not going to render at all. So it'll be much faster. Then let's just go back to solid view and show overlays. And essentially you can take a basic cube and just tab and make a few subdivisions here and there and just extrude a few of these faces out to create different spaceships based on your preferences or whatever and I have one version with spaceships that were just created like this fairly randomly, but I'm not going to be showing that particular method of just creating a few spaceships like that for this tutorial. Instead, what I'm going to do is just press Shift A and search for a mesh cube and I'll scale this up on the Y axis by maybe two units and I'll scale it down on everything but the Y axis by maybe 0.8 just to give it a more elongated look. Then I'll press tab to go into edit mode and press Ctrl R and add in a loop cut here. Then I'll just select all of these faces by going to face select mode and pressing alt shift and selecting along with this one and then going to the materials and adding in a new material which is going to be maybe my ship base and then I'll add in two more slots this one I'll add in a new material and call this ship light red and the last one I'll add in a new material and call it ship light blue then instead of actually selecting all of these what I'll do is I'll press ctrl r to add in another loop cut over here and ctrl r to add in a loop cut here and I'll select these faces along with this one and give it this ship light red material so I'll just press this assign button and then I'll do the same thing for these tail ends. Let's select this and this. Select ship light blue and hit assign. Ideally, since this is the forward axis, these should be blue and the back end should be red. So let's just switch that up, select these, this light red and assign, select these and this light blue and assign. Then for the materials, the ship base, I'm just going to increase the metallic value all the way to one, press shift A, search for a Voronoi texture, switch over to rendered view, and I'm just going to change the randomness down to zero, keep it on the base itself and plug this into the roughness value of the principled BSDF. Then I'll choose ship light red, delete the principled BSDF, search for an emission node, change this to a red, make the strength something like 10 and plug the emission into the surface. Similarly, ship light blue do the exact same thing search for an emission node and this time we're going to change it to blue increase the strength to 10 and plug that into the surface as well now maybe this can be one ship and the reason why we're doing this is because we're going to add in so much of motion blur that it shouldn't be noticeable and that makes me wonder why we even use this for right texture let's delete that because it'll be faster to render as well then maybe i'll create another variation where instead of a blue light it has a yellow light so let's press shift d x and bring it to the side press tab and just press this button to duplicate this material and we'll rename this to ship light yellow and we'll change the color to a yellowish color. Now I want both of these to be scaled on the Y axis by a little bit more. So let's just scale them up and then I'll press control A and apply the scale. Once I'm happy with that, I'm going to add both of these to a new collection by pressing M and choosing new collection. I'll name the collection ships and then I'll just hide the collection over here. Next, I'll unhide the cube again. And now I'm going to add in two particle systems. So press shift A and search for a mesh circle and the circle should be present right there. We can rotate it on the y-axis by 90 degrees to just give it the right orientation 
after which we'll just scale it down a bit and press tab to go into edit mode and tap F to add in a face. Then again, press tab to go into object mode and then you can go to the particle properties and add in a new particle system. Now for the particle system, we have to go down to the field weights and just switch off gravity as well as everything else. Now, if you were to just play the animation, you can see how these particles are moving, but they're all dying before they even come outside the tunnel. So we have to make changes. The first thing that we'll do is reduce the number down to something really low like 25 because we don't want a huge number of ships to be moving through. The frame start will change it to something like minus 300 so that right from frame one, we have a few particles present on the outside. Along with that, we'll change the lifetime from 50 up to something like 800 so that even beyond my animation length, the particles don't die. So now that is what these look like and that's good enough. But I obviously don't want them to be rendered out as halos. I want them to be rendered out as the ships that I just created. So down under the render settings, so over here, I'll change render as halo to right, render as collection. And for the collection, I'll just choose ships. Now for the scale, I'll reduce it even further. So make it 0.01 maybe or two. And I'll change the scale randomness all the way to one. After which for the velocity in this particular tutorial, I want it to be really, really high. So let's change it to something like 20 so that we get really fast moving ships. Now these fast moving ships, when we add in motion blur should make it look fairly cool. Now I feel like the number of particles is a bit too less. So let's come back here, increase the number to 50 and the scale as well. I'm going to actually change it to 0.05 itself. Maybe I'll change the scale randomness to 0.5 and make this 0.3. Now that we have these particles being emitted and moving about, we can take this circle itself and press shift D X and bring it out here. And then we'll just rotate it on the Z axis by 180 degrees. And that way we have particles moving both in the forward direction as well as the backward direction. When you look at it from the camera's perspective, you should see particles moving both out and particles moving in. Once you're happy with everything, make sure that you render out a single frame to just see how much of motion blur is there. If you feel like there's too much motion blur, reduce the shutter value. So this is what our motion blur currently looks like. It's not exactly what I want. So I'm going to go ahead and play around with the shutter over here. You can always reduce it to reduce the motion blur and you can increase it to increase the motion blur. Along with that, you can increase the number of steps to increase the accuracy of the motion blur. And once you're done playing with that, if you have something that you like, you can go ahead and just render animation. I really hope that was a fun one and you can use this to create various space scenes or things like that. There previously was another software called JS Placement, which would allow us to create scenes like this much faster and with even more variations and it would look far more sci-fi. However, sadly, JS Placement is no longer a software that you can download from official sources. So I tried my best to create something similar without the use of JS Placement. Until the next video comes out tomorrow, thank you so much for watching and keep creating and stay creative.